What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? I am Will with Exposing the IWC, and today we're going to be talking about the madness of last night, and I'll be talking a little bit about Julia going to the WWE, and a little bit about Stand and Deliver, but not that much, but we're really going to be focusing on what happened at Mania last night. Should be fun. All right, so... If you're living under a rock, there's been a little bit of mixed reactions to what happened last night on the show. Um, I've seen people call it mid Mama Rhodes. Exactly. I've seen, I've seen people call it, what's up, Pedro? I've seen people call it mid. I've seen people call it awesome. I've seen people call it. on bad i don't think it was bad i thought it was all right i thought it was all right um could have been better sure was it the worst thing in the world no but um i think it was all right um about to go through every one of these matches talk about my thoughts give you my thoughts and tell you how i thought about it overall if i had to give a number out of 10 I would probably say a solid, well, eight might be a little too nice. Seven, somewhere between seven and eight. I don't know. Somewhere between a seven and an eight. Um, do I think the crowd going to be better tonight? Um, probably not because apparently the reason why the crowd was bad was because it was cold and you can't, I can sympathize with that. Okay. If you're out there in the stadium, you're cold and you're shivering in your boots. It's hard to get all super excited about what you see when you're tired. Okay. I understand that. I'm not going to be too judgmental at first I was, but once I heard that potentially the reason why they were so, they weren't as active is because it was so damn cold. Well then fine. I kind of understand that. So I'm not going to be as hard. It was cold. Um, so yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know the weather, so I don't know if it's going to be any cold, any warmer this time around. Uh, but if it's cold again, I would expect the same type of reaction from the crowd. Um, 7.5. Yeah. Like, yeah, the, probably 7.5 out of 10. I would think nothing too, ex nothing too bad. Nothing too, um, great. I'm gonna break down all these matches and kind of give you my overall thoughts of what they did, how it was booked in the overall direction. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with the um, with the show. Like I said, somewhere between seven and eight. I don't know where, but somewhere in there. Um, but let's go ahead and start with um, this breakdown. I'll switch to this screen. The first match we're talking about here. Good old Becky Lynch taking on Mommy. Uh, all right. So I told you what was going to happen here. I told you that Rhea Ripley was going to win. When we're talking about Rhea versus Becky Lynch, you, you have to talk about mommy and mommy is always on top. All right. I knew, I knew that triple H was not going to book his daughter to lose this match because Rhea Ripley is hot. Rhea Ripley is on the rise. Rhea Ripley is a fan favorite. Rhea Ripley should not be losing right now. Not right now. I know folks are upset with her reign. The biggest criticism we hear is that people, people are not really that into her booking and how the judgment day is kind of the focus and not so much her title reign. Um, that's not her fault. That's on triple H, but that's the issue people have with her booking. Um, she was never going to lose to Becky Lynch. Like I said, they're building her up even more to establish her as one of the faces of the division. One of the pillars, they did the same thing with Bianca. I've been saying it time and time again, who did Oscar lose to in, in mania? Oscar lost to Rhea Ripley and she lost to Bianca. Who did Becky Lynch lose to? She lost to. Rhea Ripley and she lost to Bianca. And then both of them also have another 
for a horsewoman victory at Mania. Charlotte Flair has lost to Rhea Ripley. Sasha Banks has lost to Bianca. It's even Steven in terms of in terms of in terms of WrestleMania wins. It's even among Bianca and Rhea Ripley. Both beat they both beat Oscar, and they both have four horsewoman wins. Two of them. Okay. This is the plan. They are continuing to build up Rhea Ripley, and I don't see an end in sight in the near future. This was a good match. Um, a lot of good stuff. TJ Wilson produced this match. It was a good job. TJ always does a good job. He did Bianca's matches at Mania. He did Bianca's singles matches, to be clear. And he done Baker Lynch's singles matches for the most part. And he always does a good job. He knows how to work with Bianca. He knows how to work with Becky. And now he worked with Rhea Ripley. And he did a very good job with this match. Well produced. Some cool spots. The electric, the electric chair spot where they go over the top and she stays on Rhea Ripley's shoulders. I thought that was cool. Uh, yes, I thought the kick out of the um, first rip riptide was was good. I thought the riptide finish where she did it to the on the turnbuckle and then hit her hit the hit the riptide again. I thought that was really good. So I'm not complaining. The outcome was obvious. As long as Triple H is booking, Rhea Ripley is going to be in a very good spot in that division. I don't see Becky Lynch ending her title reign. I saw some people talking about potentially having Becky Lynch come back and what? Get a rematch? I don't see it. She beat her clean. It doesn't matter if she was sick or not. Like that's, a, that's not an excuse you use. I was sick. When was the last time somebody was sick and they got a rematch because they were ill? I don't know about that one, Chief, okay? I believe it's over for Rhea Ripley and Becky. And now we are full on the Liv Morgan Express train. Liv Morgan Revenge Tour is in full effect, all right? And I believe, I believe that Liv Morgan will have her chance. Will she be, will she be successful? I doubt she'll be successful, but Liv Morgan will have her shot at the title very soon. Um, so the, this went as, as well as I thought I, I thought it would look. I thought Rhea Ripley looked strong, looked dominant. Um, so yeah, uh, Liv Morgan will lose too, yes. So yeah, good match, good finish. Outcome predictable, outcome made sense. We're building towards an eventual, I believe, an eventual Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair matchup. Uh, Mommy is going to reign supreme. Now there's talk about potentially Rhea Ripley going all the way to Mania 41. If and when, and I fully expect her to beat Bianca Belair's record. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, well, I'll, we'll talk about it right now. Bianca Belair had the longest reign of the modern era. Rhea Ripley will beat, will beat that record. She'll beat it. Once she beats that record, I don't see what's stopping them from going all the way to Mania 41 if they wanted to. I think there's a chance that she could lose at SummerSlam if she faces Bianca. If she faces anyone else at SummerSlam, she's winning. If she faces Liv Morgan at SummerSlam, she's winning. If she rematches Becky Lynch at SummerSlam, she's winning. If she faces Bianca, there's a chance she, she could lose. And they can do like a trilogy where the Mania match is one of those matches. But if not, she could go all the way to 41. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at, folks. Um, Rhea Ripley is not losing anytime soon, unless it's Bianca at SummerSlam or something like that. Um, hey, what's up, noob? Michael Jordan flu game with the L. Yeah, she lost. She lost her flu game. Liv Morgan will lose too. I agree, she will. Um, Nah, I don't see her drop it to Bianca at SummerSlam. If they book it, she might. If they don't, then of course she won't, right? But if you have Bianca and Rhea on the same brand, which I believe they will, you have to take, in, you have to take into account a few things. There are a bunch of PLEs before SummerSlam. You have, the, you have Backlash in France. You have the Clash at the Castle. You have um, a Saudi Arabia show. Um, you have money in the bank. So if you keep Rhea Ripley off those cards, then fine. 
But if she's on those cards defending her title, she has to be defending against someone eventually. How often are you going to skip over Bianca until you get to that feud? Bianca is going to have to have a few matches of her own. Maybe she has some single feuds against Tiffany Stratton. Maybe she feuds against Nia Jax. But you have to get Bianca busy. Yeah, well, you have to keep her busy because you can't justify them being on the same brand and them not touching all the way to Rumble season. The draft is in May. You're going to go all the way to Rumble season without them touching at all? Well, the, give me the feuds. Give me the matches. Liv Morgan going to go all the way to SummerSlam? Is Rhea Ripley going to defend, going to, is Rhea Ripley going to feud with, with Liv Morgan all the way to SummerSlam? If you're all going to be having Tiffany, maybe an Ajax, maybe something else all the way to rumble, make it make sense. Tell me how it happens. It's going to be tough. It's possible, but it's going to be tough. That's all I'm saying. Um, what do I think of the hype package for what the, for the Rhea, um, Becky, I don't remember the hype package for the Rhea Becky at all. So yeah. Good match. Uh, I feel bad for Becky Lynch and her illness. Ho hopefully she feels um, better soon. Strep, fro strep, strep throat is no joke. I had that a lot as a kid. It sucked every time. I remember I had strep throat for like two weeks almost. It hurts to swallow. It hurts to eat. You don't want to eat nothing. Your throat just hurts. I haven't had it in a while, luckily. I used to get it all the time as a kid. I hated getting strep throat. The worst. It's it'll be 2022 all over again with the Rhea and Bianca being on the same brand. And it didn't do anything besides in the War Games match. I agree. That was weird, right? Bianca was champion her when she had her longest reigning championship of the modern era. Rhea was there and they didn't touch. He, he found a way to make it work by having Rhea work with the guys and Rhea was in the Judgment Day business, but they never crossed, crossed paths except for war games, like you said. And it was kind of weird. He had Bianca feuding with Alexa Bliss and then he had a, a weird Asuka feud where, where Asuka was the baby face and they were both baby faces. It was weird. Um, it's possible, but it's going to be tough now because now Rhea is established. Before Rhea was not established, she was just a muscle for, for the Judgment Day. Remember, things didn't kick off for Rhea until the Royal Rumble. That's when stuff actually kicked off. Royal Rumble 2023. She was just a muscle for the Judgment Day. But now she's champion. Now she's a force of nature. Now she's saying she's the best. You have Bianca there gunning for being the best. It's going to be harder this time because people see Bianca as a threat for the title no matter where she's at. And then you have Rhea as the dominant champion. It's going to be harder to justify keeping, the, keeping them away. So I think... Eventually, they got to get Bianca and Rhea in the mix and maybe a SummerSlam match, assuming, I hope, I hope, assuming they're all on the same brand. They have to be. I would be shocked if he was dumb enough to put Bianca away from Rhea Ripley. They need to be on the same brand going forward, please. Do I think Bianca and Naomi would, and Jade would join the Pride? No, but we'll talk about them in a second. All right, let's move on to the next one. Again, mommy's on top. Good showing for the for both of them. Becky Lynch may have to go on a break, maybe. I don't know. But it's all Rhea Ripley's time to shine. She's getting all the applauds, all the congratulations, and all the praise. Deservedly so. She's talented. But let's see what happens now with Liv Morgan and then eventually Bianca Belair. All right, let's move on to the next match. It was the tag match, the ladder match. Um, good match, fun. Um, I would have given I would have given the last match we talked about Rhea versus Becky maybe um four stars, like a solid four stars. This was the, this I thought was good. It was fun. I called it. I told you guys that Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, which is eight town down under, was going to win one of the titles. They did, and then I told you the baby faces, our truth, and the Miz. Awesome truth. We're going to win the other ones, which happened. So pretty predictable, but fun. Um, could have, could it have had some better spots, some more fun spots, some more. Oh my God moments. Yeah, it could have. It was all right. There was a time where um, in the match where there was working with a ladder that was damaged and it could have been a very 
dangerous situation. A ref had to tell Damien to swap out the ladders because the ladder was da was damaged. That was a uh, that was an interesting time. Um, but yeah, it, overall, solid match. Right winners won. What's next for Damien Priest and Finn Balor? We'll see. The Judgment Day took a lot of L's. Besides, besides Rhea, they all took L's. Um, does Damien Priest try to cash in tonight? Maybe. That could be interesting. Yeah, what's scary was. Could Damien Priest cash in on Logan Paul? No, that would be dumb. Could he cash in on Drew? Pot potentially. You could, you could maybe have Damien Priest cash in on Drew and then Drew win it off of him in the Clash of the Castle because Clash of the Castle will be in Scotland. You could do that. Um, I don't know. Damien Priest had to, that briefcase. They got to do something eventually. I don't know what, but they have to do something. But this was a fun match. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on this? I thought it was fun. Tag match was the second best match of the night for you, for you Richard. It was fun. No complaints. It was solid. Um, it was definitely one of the better matches. That's for sure. One of the better ones. Uh, we'll get to the matches that weren't too good. But this one was actually one of the better matches. Um, can't complain. Can't complain that much. Um, what else happened in this match? Um, nothing really. Just, just some fun. Good fun. Some cool spots. Um, some table spots that were awesome. Um, what else? Drew and Damien could, could headline Clash of the Castle. They definitely could. That could be a good call right there. Definitely could. Um, DIY came out with the whole DX thing. They're, le they're really leaning into like the DX vibe. DIY is. I don't know how I feel about it. It's all right. Um, but it's not the best. Not the best look. Damien Priest should have cashed in on Roman Reigns last night. But then they got to deal with the final boss. Do, do they, does he really want to deal with the final boss? I don't know about that one. Or the the Gargano spot where he, where he did the DDT into the table. That was cool. That um springboard, almost like springboard DDT into the table on the outside. That was a cool spot. It was. Yeah, fun match. Um, fun stuff. Not much more to say about it. But uh, I like this concept of having two. I mean, is this something they could do every year? Have a tag match where both tag titles are in the sky, in the sky, hanging above the ring, and like a six-man tag match every year, um, a six-team tag, um, tag match. That way, get a lot of people on the card. Um, yeah, it could be fun. Maybe not every year you have this concept, but because you actually need to tell stories in a tag division maybe. But maybe they do this for the ladies. Maybe next year the ladies have a tag match with the real tag teams. Maybe there's three or four of them. That could be cool. But yeah, it was it's a good match. I like the idea. I like the visual of both sets of tag titles hanging. That was cool. Good stuff. Not complaining. I'll give it a 3.75. Um, yeah. Three and three. Three and three quarters. That's what I'll give it. Three and three quarters. Then we have a match that I think did not have to be on the show. Once I saw the ending. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this match. We had Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio taking on Rey Mysterio and not Dragon Lee. This picture was not updated. It was freaking... Um, Andrade. All right. So this picture is not up to date. I thought that Dom Dom and Santos were going to win because Ray beat Dom last year. And once I saw the results, once I saw that, no, that's not the case. Dom is losing again. I thought, what was the point of this match? Someone tell me I'm all ears. I'll look in the chat. What was the point of this match? If Dom was going to lose. Fun, fun enough, good wrestling, solid enough. But what's the point if Ray is going to beat him again? I mean, it already felt that Dom being in this match was came out of nowhere anyway. I just, they just wanted the Dom, the Dom. They just wanted Dom to be in the match for heat. 
because he left the Judgment Day and started working with Santos out of nowhere. So I thought, oh, this is where Dom gets the win, but he lost again. So what was the point of the match? I'm not sure, folks. I'm not sure. So maybe somebody can tell me what the point of this match. Yeah, that was a cool spot with the Andrade and um, yeah, that was cool. Um, they also did the whole springboard, the springboard sh uh, spot with um, um, what's the guy's name? Jeez, I cannot remember his name. Ah, uh, man. Walking Wild, Walking Wild. I'm looking at it, it says right there, Andrade and Walking. Yeah, <laughs> Walking Wild. That was a cool spot. I'm mad had they lost. Yeah, I don't know what the point. The point of the match was to have a Lucha Libre match on the card. Yeah, I agree. But why not have Dom win, you know? That's fair. That's the point. If that's the point, I got it. Okay. But then from that point, why not have Dom win? Have, have a Lucha Libre match, but then I'll have Dom win. Why not? Ray gets the win, then Dom gets the win. I just don't understand, but fun enough, cool spots. Um, it was exciting stuff for the most part. Was it better than the last two matches? No, I give it a solid 3.5. I like Becky Rhea in the tag match more than this. Um, but this was fun enough. Um, Carlito, I thought there was a chance that Carlito was going to turn in that match. He didn't. They're doing the slow burn, slow burn with Carlito, but I'm sure eventually he will turn because Ray is a terrible leader. I feel another reason why I wanted Dom to win. I'm kind of annoyed with Ray and how he keeps disrespecting his teammates. He disrespected Santos. He disrespected Carlito. He just doesn't get it. Like Carlito is right there. Have him help you. Why are you asking Dragon Lee? Then you went to um, Andrade. Who attacked, who attacked Dragon Lee? Who attacked Dragon Lee? Probably Carlito because Ray Mysterio is a bad leader. They should have done the five on five tag match instead. That that could have been messy. All of them were out there. Like all of them had like a spot. Even Zelina had a spot. That Zelina spot was dangerous. Um, that moonsault, Electra Lopez was too far out. Electra had to get closer and she didn't. That moonsault almost like she almost landed flat on her stomach. That was a rough moonsault because Electra Lopez was too far back. So all of them had like a spot. So it was like a, so even though they weren't in the match, all the groups had a little bit of like a influence on the match and a little bit of a highlight there. So that was good. But I just thought Dom should have won, you know? Ray is as terrible as Bailey, maybe even worse. He doesn't get it. He's, 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 a, he's delusional. He's, he's lost. Ray, Mysterio man. You deserve all the heat you get. Get it together, man. Get it together. Okay. Time to talk about probably the worst match on the damn card, which was Jimmy versus Jay. Jimmy versus Jay. Um, what a disappointment. What's a colossal disappointment this match was i gotta tell you um why that's my response to this match why 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 after all this storytelling with the bloodline after all this family drama after all of this nonsense that was some of it actually pretty good going all the way back to to jimmy turning on roman and then Jay turning on Roman and then them fighting Roman in the bloodline civil war and then Jay leaving and Jimmy going back to the bloodline after all of that, after all of it, you mean to tell me that this is the best you can produce for a mania match between two brothers in a way, in a way they were exposed a little bit. Unfortunately, they were kind of exposed. Jimmy and Jay were exposed a little bit. Never have them wrestle again. One-on-one -on -one, ever again. Never, never let them wrestle one-on-one -on -one again. 
We don't need to see it. Once is enough. One match is enough. We don't need to see them super kicking each other, punching each other again, doing the mirror image of each of the thing over and over and over again. It's the same thing back and forth. I do a super kick. Then you do a super kick. Then I do a super kick. Then you do a super kick over and over and over. Poorly produced match. I think it was Jason Jordan, who's usually a very good booker. He did terrible with this match. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. I can't believe it. I can't believe what I saw. Um, all that buildup, all that drama, all that suspense, all that emotion, that's the best you got. And then Jimmy did that whole, oh, I'm sorry, Jay. Everyone and their mama knew J Jimmy was lying. Like, it was obvious he was lying. Jay falls for it. Just bad, all around bad, boring, and dull. Not the worst thing in the world, but bad in terms of, in terms of my expectation. In terms of my expectations, that match was bad. In a vacuum, was it bad? No, it was just disappointing and kind of lame. Yeet, no yeet, yeah. It was, um, it, the, hype video, the hype video for the match was good, sure. That was cool. This match, I think a lot of a reason why a lot of people think this this night of wrestling was bad was because of this match. This is the fulcrum. This is a turning point, right? If this match was good, if this match was good, I think people will feel better about the entire show. But because it was bad, people have a problem with it. People are down on the show. Had this match been a banger, a five star, even a four star match. People say, oh yeah, this match, this card was pretty good. Night one was good. But because it was so disappointing, it kind of brings down the entire show. Like this was the fulcrum. This was the big match here. Had this been good, I think the tone around the match, around the show, the tone around the show would be completely different had this match have been good, but it wasn't. Because you had Dominic Mysterio and Ray Mysterio match, which was okay. Then you had this match, which was disappointing. Then you had the next match that we're talking about that's kind of forgettable, you know? So that three match stretch kind of brought the show down. And that's why you can't book like this. You gotta be smart with your booking. Jay versus Jimmy should have been a, people were expecting a classic. They were expecting a full on classic with this match and they did not get that whatsoever. This appointing folks. That's what it was. Disappointing. The hype video was better than the entire match. It was. Unfortunately, it's, it's a shame. You don't even blame Jason Jordan. The Usos have a terrible move set. Their move set is very basic and repetitive. That's why they can't wrestle each other. Jay versus Gunther was a good match because you had a wrestling a wrestling master, a, a tactician in there against Jay Uso and his hype and his leg kicks, you know. Can't have them fighting each other. It's a bad matchup. The movesets are not that interesting or compelling. You need them facing off against people who can wrestle like Gunther, like a Gable, like um, or even like a big guy, like a Bronson Reed, and then they can have a good match, but not against each other. Mistake. They should never wrestle each other one-on-one -on -one ever again. You thought Rikishi was going to show up? That or have him be the guest referee, but no Rikishi. No Rikishi. Maybe he'll show up in the main event. Maybe that's who will show up in the main event, maybe. He's there. He was at the um, Hall of Fame um, show, the um, ceremony. Oh, well. Yeah, the disappointing show. Not Well, not show. Disappointing match was this one. Um, what a letdown. No yeet yeet, I don't care anymore. Get it off my screen. Never wrestle ever again. That's what I say. All right, let's move over to the six woman tag match. The match that I said was a no stakes match. The match that I dubbed, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said this, but I called it a bathroom break match when I was upset when it didn't have any stakes. I call it that it's not a bathroom break match. It's not, but it does have no stakes. 
And like I said, ultimately, this will be a match. I believe that folks who are not invested in these people, like if you're a big time Bianca fan, you're going to remember this match. Oh, what do I rate the last match? Um, I'll give Jimmy versus Jay a generous, a generous 2.5 out of, out of five. 2.5 stars. That's being nice. 2.5. Um, now, as far as this match goes, um, if you're not invested in these characters, like if you're a Bianca fan, if you're a Naomi fan, if you're a Jay Cargill fan, if you're a Dakota Kai diehard, if you're a Kyrie diehard, if you're a big time Oscar fan, you'll remember this match, right? But beyond that, a couple, a couple of weeks from now, four weeks from now, a month from now, two months from now, nobody will be talking about this match. Nobody will remember it because it was just a no, a nothing tag match that only lasted not 15 minutes, not 12 minutes, not 10 minutes, an eight minute match. I kid you not. This match was eight minutes. Eight minutes. This match was okay. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't. All right. <sighs> this match was, um, the interests were good, which I expected. I like the interests like Pedro. You're correct. Those interests were nice. Um, great presentation, great visuals. Everyone looked like a million bucks. I, th I thought the Kodakai looked amazing. Everyone looked great. Bianca looked great. Jay looked great. Naomi looked like Kun Lao from Mortal Kombat. They all look pretty cool and awesome. Um, but ultimately that's what it was. It was a showcase for how cool they look and a showcase for Jade Cargill to have a match. And they gave us a match. It was eight minutes. It was fast. It was pretty basic. Um, I said, like I said before, the match would be designed and structured around the Jay Cargill hot tag. And that's what happened. That was the focal point. They were building up to the Jay Cargill hot tag. And that's what they did. Crowd loved it. The crowd got behind Jay Cargill. She came in, she had like five moves, five basic moves, nothing too fancy, nothing you can really get wrong. She landed them. Like a minute later, the match was over. It is what it is. All right. The quarter Kai looked amazing. She looked amazing. I thought it would be like 15 minutes last year. Um, Trish Radis live, um, Lita and, um, Becky against damage control. They got 15 minutes this year. The damage control match only got eight minutes. Why that is the case, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I don't know why last year got 15 and this year only got eight. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they needed more time for the tag team match, the greatest tag team match of all time, maybe. But uh, this is kind of disappointing. Um, not, not because of the talent, they did the best they could. Um, one thing I'll say, um, cause of course, the baby faces, the baby faces got the win and Jay Cargo got the pin. One thing I'll say, and I'll talk about Oscar in a second, but one thing I'll say, they got to get Bianca and Jade away from each other. They've got to get Bianca and Jade away from each other because I saw online the discourse around Jade and Bianca. I said this before. I've always said this. People will not listen. They will continue to compare these two. They will compare these two over and over again. And what they did in this match, they set up Jade to look bad. All right. Because Bianca went out there, did all her power moves and was swift and was fast and was fluid and was doing backflips and looking like amazing. She was the best performer in this match by far. Clear cut, the best performer. Then she tagged in Jade and it was a lot of the same power moves, but not, but not the agility, not the, not smooth. It was stiff. So we're like, She's doing the same kind of moves Bianca's doing, the same kind of power moves, but not as good. And it looks bad. People, like, I went online, I went, I went on Reddit. That's all they were saying. Like, Bianca looks good and Jade, not so much, right? They have to stop. They can't have them with each other anymore. They can't. 
no, no tag team. There are people, there are people talking about Jade Bianca should do a, do a tag team. No, they should not. They, they gotta separate them quick, fast, and in a hurry. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. They have to separate Jade and Bianca. They cannot continue to have this comparison be highlighted. It's not good for Jade. I'm telling you, it's not good. They have to be on separate brands and fast. No tag team, no more matches together. Separate them. Jade has a long way to go. She does. She's green. She's green. It is what it is. They're protecting her. That's why she's not in any singles matches. That's why she's not having that many long matches at all. She only had two matches, the Royal Rumble and this one. She only hit like she only hit like five moves. They're trying to protect her, but you can't have her with Bianca anymore. It looks bad. You can't. Gotta separate. Because a lot of their offense is looking kind of similar when Jade just comes in there and does the double chicken wing, you know, does a little big boot, little big boot, does a little slam. It's not different enough. And it looks like you just it's just it's just a bad comparison that you don't want to further expose. Right, just stop. Stop it. No more Bianca and Jade stuff in the ring. No more. It's not good. Jade is a far away from main event singles matches. She's far away. People talking about Bianca versus Jade at Mania. You're out of your mind. Not at 41. No. She needs a year or two to get it together in the ring. Got to stop. Got to stop talking about Bianca and Jade together. Got to stop talking about that dream match. She's not there yet. It's going to be disappointing. She's not there yet. She's not ready for Bianca. She's not ready for Jade. For Rhea, okay? So I would do stuff like maybe have her facing a Bailey down the line. Maybe having her face someone who is not the... Somebody she can easily throw around. Like a smaller veteran. Sasha Banks would have been perfect, but Sasha's not here. You do a Bailey, do Alexa Bliss, do a Liv Morgan. Somebody that's with who, somebody who's a veteran who can lead her, but is small enough to take her offense and not like the, not like a bigger girl that has to should she didn't have to sell for like the bigger girl like Bianca or, or, or Rhea. Don't love it. Let her face the smaller chicks who are veterans and have her just toss them around. That'll look better for her than to have her try to go 15 minutes with Rhea Ripley or 15, 20 minutes with Bianca Belair or even 15, 20 minutes with Charlotte Flair. It's not going to be good for her. Not now. Not now. Maybe a year or two, but not now. No, 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 no. Stop it. Stop it right now. That would be better. JD versus EO would be better. Work with Bailey, Carmella, and Natalia. Yes, correct. That's what you need to do. Stop putting Bianca and Jade together. It looks bad right now. Because you can't help but compare. Well, I, I, can, I can help it, but fans can't. And if you keep doing that, they'll be just saying, oh, she's like a, a lesser version. And that's not fair, but they have to stop doing that. A lot of their offense is similar. The double, both, both of them do the double chicken wing, lift up in the air, but she goes down to the glam slam or the Jaden, right? Bianca just drops him. That match was clear. Go back and watch that match. Go back and watch it. Watch Bianca's segment in the match where she's doing the, the, the moonsault on all three of them. She's slamming around. She's pressing them in the air, right? Then watch Jay Cargill. It's not right. It's not there yet. It's, she has more time. She needs more time. She's stiff. She's not as fluid. She's not as smooth. And, you can, and if you keep putting them together, it's going to be further exposed. It's a problem. I just want to make sure I got that out the way. That it, that's one thing I noticed. Go back and watch it. The entire match is on Twitter, by the way. The entire match is on Twitter. I tweeted it out. Go back and watch it. It's a problem. So, with that being so, with that being said, I thought Naomi was fine. I thought she was fine. Um. Everyone else was fine, but I just, that's, that really stood out. Like Bianca had her stuff, did the hot tag. Jay came in like, whoa, this is different. It's substantially different. And they need to notice it and stop putting them together. Um, Asuka and her, her not winning in, at Mania. At this point, 
I'm not going to say next year because Asuka fans are tired of hearing that. So I'm just going to say, I hope her time will come. I hope she'll get that win. I believe it will happen. But right now, they just valued Jay Cargill getting that win and Jay Cargill having a spot on the show, even though there's other wrestlers that are better in the ring. Namely, Tiffany, namely, Nia, namely, Liv Morgan. They're all better than her in the ring. But, you know, it is what it is. They wanted to highlight Jay Cargill and give her a spot. So they gave her like five moves, and that was it, you know? Yeah, it's just, um, it is what it is, you know? Yeah, she's so smooth, man. She's so smooth in the ring. It was just further highlighted last night. It was just further highlighted the difference between her and some of the folks. That's why I'm desperate to see her against Rhea Ripley. Cause that's an actual match that will actually be a potential to actually be a five-star match that you can have on a big show like a Mania, like a SummerSlam, and headline and be confident that they're going to deliver. They will deliver in that match, I would think. I agree. I do believe she'll get it before she retires. So, Oscar is a little washed, but I still respect her and appreciate her. She still can go. That match she had last year with um um Io Sky was very good. She can still go. This they're just not using her as a focal point in the division or a focal point in the singles division. But she's having fun. She's enjoying her time. She's enjoying her time with um um. How are you saying? So I'm ha I'm happy for her that in that regard. But yeah, it's just um, just a different time. Same way people are talking about um, Becky Lynch kind of being phased out a little bit. That's happening with Oscar. If it has, if it's happening with Becky Lynch, then of course it will happen. With, it's going to happen with Oscar a little bit, you know. So but yeah, this was a, this was, it, this it is what it is with it. It was eight minutes. It was fast. Um, Baby face is one, whatever, you know. Why do I get the feeling that damage control may get buried when Eos loses tonight? Um, that could be, here's the thing. I believe the damage control story will continue with Bailey. Um, I think the Kota Kai could get a push. I think the Kota Kai, I believe the Kota Kai could win the money in the bank and then chase Bailey, if EO loses, I'm not sure what they do. That's a wild card because EO has been a background character in her own feud. So what happens to her going forward? And she's champion, by the way. She's champion. She's been a background character. So I'm not sure what happens with her going forward. We'll have to see. I just hope that damage control is away from Bianca Belair for the love of God, you know? That's all I hope. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. Next match was Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Um, this was a big time feel good moment for the show. The big baby face win for the championship. Sami Zayn ends Gunther's 666 day reign. That's a fun number, I guess. He ended the reign. He came out. He looked like the big underdog. Gunther, the dominant champion, the dominant heel champion, was dominating most of the match. And Sami Zayn got that break, hit the brain buster, hit the Galuva kick, and um, got the win. For, good for Sami Zayn. Did I think Sami Zayn needed this win? No. I would prefer if Sami Zayn chased the world title. But this frees up Gunther to chase Cody Rhodes down the line. So I understand. Um, would I prefer Chad Gable? Yes. Uh, but it is what it is. Sami Zayn gets the win. He'll go to SmackDown because I believe Logan Paul on his podcast, he told Hunter, Triple H, he told him that he wanted to go to Raw. And I believe he'll grant that. He'll, he'll grant that. So Logan Paul will be on Raw and Sami Zayn will be on SmackDown. And if Gunther stays on Raw, well, then Gunther has to chase Cody Rhodes. So that's why I think that'll go. It definitely contender for match of the night. Fun stuff. The crowd was into it. Sami Zayn's wife was into it. They, they cut to her a lot. She had a moment in the match. She had a 
She was telling the story in the match. So could Gunther kept coming to her and talking crap, you know. Goes bad karma for for Gunther or Sami Zayn. Uh, yeah, this definitely had the crowd on their feet. The crowd that was cold in Philly. This match got them on their feet, got them warm, got the blood, got the blood pumping. Yeah, it was definitely Rocky nostalgia for sure. They were leaning, they were leaning into it. They had the freaking whole training montage with Chad Gable. He went to the gym like once and got good, you know. But it was a, um, it was a good match. Good match. Good showing for Sami Zayn. Um, there's people who think he, he, um, there's folks who thought he, uh, botched that move, but it wasn't a botch. It was a brain buster. He did it in the Indies where you dropped it. You drop your opponent on their head on the turnbuckle or the rope. That's, that's what he did to Gunther. Big spot, big wow, big wow moment for the show. So congrats, Sami Zayn, Gunther. Hopefully you start chasing Cody Rhodes after, after tonight. Hopefully he gets drafted to Raw. Because I think that's where Cody Rhodes is going to go. I could be wrong. I don't know. There's people who believe that Cody Rhodes has to be on SmackDown. I don't agree. I don't agree. I think Cody can go to Raw for sure. He's won the money, money in the bank. He's won the IC title before. So it's not a first for him. I guess for him, it was just beating Gunther. Beating Gunther was the big thing. Gunther is unbeatable. No one can beat him. So him winning the match was a bit, that was the victory in it. Like he's already had that title before. So not the title is not the big deal. The title really means nothing. It's more about beating Gunther. That's the, that's the prize beating, Gunther, beating Gunther with the prize, you know? So he beat Gunther. Good for him. Um, we'll see how far he takes the IC title. I think he'll be on SmackDown. Who will be chasing the, for the, Oh, he'll have to face Bronson Reed pretty soon. Cause Bronson Reed beat him twice recently. Twice. So Bronson Reed will get a, a shot at the, that damn title. So we'll see where that goes. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Solid match. Well, good match. It was a good match. It was good. It was good. Um, this and the... This match and the first two matches were good, I thought. So good on you, Sami Zayn. Cody stays on Raw. I see Seth and Becky going to SmackDown. I could see that for sure. Especially if CM Punk, because I think Drew McIntyre will go obviously to the opposite brand that, that um, Cody Rhodes is on. So you want CM Punk, Seth, and CM Punk, Seth, and Drew McIntyre on one show to tell that story. Because Seth still hates CM Punk, and CM Punk hates Drew McIntyre, so they can still work together. And Becky goes to SmackDown as well. Assuming they put, assuming they put Cody Rhodes on Raw, of course. And now for the final match, it was the tag team match. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The greatest tag team match of all time is what it was. Um, Seth freaking Rollins, Cody Rhodes taking on Roman Reigns and the final boss, Dwayne, the rock Johnson. This match was boring at first. The first 20 minutes was the typical bloodline slash Roman Reigns, slow build, slow build. The final 15 matches was very good. 15 matches. The final 15 minutes was good. Um, I think the big moment, the big moment was the, the spear onto the rock when um, Roman Reigns misses because Seth Rollins pushes Cody Rhodes out the way and he spears the rock. That was a big moment in it. And then they did the whole double pedigree spot. Everything after that was pretty fast, pretty dynamic and pretty good. But before that, it was kind of slow. Um, kind of slow. Roman matches have the same formula, the same formula. First 20 minutes, slow build, working the crowd, trying to tell a story. And then it picks up and goes like super fast. Did they need 45 minutes? No, not 45 minutes. They could have done They could have done this at 35, 35 minutes is more than enough. They did not need 45 minutes to do this. 30 to 35 would have been perfect. 
save 10 minutes off this thing. It, it did not have to be that damn long. Sorry, it did not. What else happened? The Rock told the ref. One thing I picked up on, The Rock told the ref that if he counted them out, he would be fired, right? The, the match basically became a bloodline rules match where anything goes, no DQ match. That's what it became because The Rock was the board on the board and he used his influence. But here's the thing. If The Rock has the power to make the ref do that, for the ref not to count him out, then he, ha he has the power no matter what of the result to make the next match on Sunday bloodline rules, right? Even if, even if Cody and Seth won, The Rock has, can sit on the board. He, he sits on the board so he can make that match the next day bloodline rules anyway because he clearly doesn't care about the rules because he asked the ref to not count him out. And if they did, and if he did, he'll be fired. So obviously the rules don't apply to rock. So even, so no matter what happened, he could have made the next match in a bloodline rules match, even in, even anyway. So like, what was the point of the stipulation? The, the point was just to like, give us some stakes, right? Just make it important. But ultimately they established in the match that the rock Dwayne Johnson has the ultimate power. So even if they would have lost, he could have made it the match. No DQ. By just telling the ref, I'll fire you if you don't make it no DQ. So the stipulation really didn't matter. The point was to get Dwayne Rock, the point was to get Dwayne on the show in the main event, right? The match had no real stakes. We established that during the match. The Rock has ultimate power. So, so it didn't really matter, right? The match was there to get The Rock on the card in the main event of night one. It is what it is, you know? Um, it was fun in the end. The first 45, 45, the first 20 minutes was kind of slow, but it, ultimately it worked out. Cody's going to bring the nightmare family to the bloodline rules match. We may get Cena, stone cold. Who knows? It's, I think it's going to be a mess, but in a good way, like a, a good mess. I think tonight, anything goes expect the unexpected, a lot of surprises. I think. But The Rock sits on the board, so he can pretty much do whatever he wants. He can pretty much do whatever he wants. You thought the tag match was underwhelming, Razar. I thought it was fine. It, it picked up. Once it picked up, I thought it was legitimately good. But the first 20 minutes, it was rough. It was rough. But the last 15 was legitimately a fun ride, a fun mess of a match to watch. Like he, he, he teased the um, people's elbow twice. The first time Cody jumped up and hit him with the cutter, which I thought was good. And the second time he won with the pin off of the, off of the people's elbow. Good stuff overall. Um, yeah, I always watched, the thing about that match, I would only go back and watch the last 15. Is that a good thing? No. If you will only go back and watch the last 15, 15 minutes, then you probably failed. The match was probably too long. You know? You know it ultimately ended up being good. The end shot with Cody Rhodes staring the same way he stared last year. Same shot with Roman in the background. I thought it was good. The strong storytelling elements there. Um, the last ending, the last ending, the last spot was good. The, like I said, the rock hitting that people's elbow. What would I rate this match? After everything, probably 4.25, either a four or 4.25. Um, I forgot to rate the last match. The last match, I'll give a 4.25 to Gunther versus um, Sami Zayn. Um, the the six-woman tag match, I'll give a three. That's just a three for damage control and um, the big three. Three for the big three. They call themselves the big three, they get a three for that match. And then for this match, like I said, four or 
nothing nothing was like a five star. Nothing was a, even a four point five. I don't think. Either the best was either four point four and a quarter. The worst was probably the two point the two point five, which was Jay and Jimmy. But this match was fun <clears throat> in the end. Just shave twenty minutes off of it. Not twenty minutes. Shave 10, 10 minutes off would have been a lot better. Maybe I would have given it a four point five. Had you have you shaved off the unnecessary ten? Um, but yeah, this was fun, fun match overall. I would give this sh tire show. I already talked about that, like a seven out of ten. You know, seven out of ten or seven point five. Low seven, high eight. What I'll give this show. I believe for the first time, night two will probably be better. Now, after seeing this card in, in, in action on on the screen. I believe night two will probably be better. I think Drew will have his moment. I think potentially Bailey will get his moment. I think the end. Of, I think the end of the show will be a complete mess in a good way. The one thing I'm, no, I'm nervous about is Bailey, because the. I think she's going to win, but I would not be surprised if, if they held off because they don't want Bailey's moment to be overshadowed by Cody. Because apparently she's the second to last match, the penult the penultimate match. So you're going to Bailey winning and then immediately have Cody winning. I don't know about that one. Do I think it's going to happen now? I, I think so. For now, I think so. But I would not be surprised if they held off until later just to give Bailey her big moment by herself instead of sandwiching it between Drew and Cody, you know? But we'll see. We'll see. I wonder if freaking... Because if Denver Control gets involved, which I think they will, will Bianca, Naomi, and Jay come down there? Will they get involved to help Bailey? Because you have to imagine that Asuka and Kyrie will, will go run down there, and Dakota might run down there. Will it stay one on one? That's not how typically Damage Control operates. Typically, Damage Control will come in down and get involved. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll just be a beatdown at the end. Maybe Bailey will win and then they try to beat her down. I don't know, but I, I'll be surprised if damage control did not come out there and get involved in some way. If they don't come down there, they got to explain it. You have to explain why Dakota Kai, Oscar and Kyrie would not go down there and try to in intervene in some way. You know, they have to explain it somehow. How they do that. We'll see, but they have to try to explain it somehow. Um, but yeah, um, this was a fun show. Solid, not the worst, not the best, but all right. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about this show overall? F before I transition to Julia, what do, what do you guys thoughts on this show? On night one of Mania. Solid stuff. That's why they needed stakes. Oh, yeah, the damage control match. Yeah, sure. I think so. For sure. Seven, seven to ten, seven to nine. That's a big range, my guy. Pedro, I'm going to need you to be more specific. Seven to nine is a huge range. That's like average to good, like really good. Average to really good is a big gap, my guy. Who so spoiled it a bit? I agree with that for sure. All right, let's move on to. The topic I want to talk about, which is the reaction to Julia coming to WWE. Now, if you don't know who Julia is, I'll break it down here in a second. All right. Um, Julia is a Joshi. What the? That is not supposed to be. That's not how it's supposed to be. Okay, let's try that again. Um. What is, where is the split screen? There we go. That was weird. Sheesh. All right, let's talk about Julia. Julia is a Joshi, like I said. She is a talent, big time talent from Japan. A, uh, she was 
working in stardom for the last three to four years stardom her stardom contract ended in march so she was free to sign with wherever she wanted to sign now she's still a free agent but it's heavily rumored that she's heading to the toward the wwe heavily rumored that is her ultimate de destination she'll be in nxt very soon now julia came not alone she also came with Rosie. roshi roshi is a um he was the founder of stardom and he was having issues with stardom which is why he stepped away so he wasn't enjoying how um the the parent company was handling stardom so he decided to step away and create his own promotion now with that came a uh, debate about whether he should join up with the wwe whether he should have the WWE assist, assist him with this promotion or whether he should do it on his own or just stay away from, from the WWE altogether, all right? But ultimately, both Julia and Roshi were in Philadelphia. They were at the WWE World and they were at Mania taking in the, the WrestleMania weekend. And the IWC freaked out. They absolutely freaked out. Well, not all of them. Just when I say the IWC, I'm talking about the Joshi stands and the AW stands who don't want her going to WWE, they had the dumbest complaints about people's reaction. Here's the thing. There's a lot of people who don't know who Julia is. That's which, which, which why I'm, I'm explaining it now. She was, she won the red belt, which was the, um, the world of stardom championship, the top belt in stardom. She was the um, new Japan strong women's champion which was the belt that was, was created for Mercedes Monet. She'd done everything except winning the belt that Mayu currently has, which was the, um, I, I, get, I forget the name of it. They created that belt and then Kyrie won it. And then, um, then Mercedes won it. And then Mayu won it. I forget the name of that belt. I want to say it's like the IWGP, something like that. Mayu. She's currently the... Yeah, I got it right. IWGP, a woman's champion. That belt, that belt was created by New Japan. She didn't win that one, but everything else she won, okay? There's nothing left for her to really do in stardom. So, because she's a top talent, and because she looks like a star, she carries herself like a star, she has a presence, she has aura, as the kids say, the WWE were interested in her, and fans got excited. Now... There's these fans online that we call gatekeepers or Joshi stands or AW stands that are mad and they get mad when fans from the WWE or any promotion that don't know Julia get excited about her and they say, Oh, you haven't watched her wrestle. You don't know, you know nothing about her. Like that's like a weird mentality and a weird thought process. It's like those people who, um, all those people who are in your friend group, that they like a song, they really like a song, but when a song gets popular on the radio, they don't like it anymore. They start hating on the song. Well, I don't like that song anymore because it's popular. That's really dumb, you know? If you like a song, it shouldn't matter if it's on the radio or not. The song is still the same. So why would you not like it anymore? Because it gets popular. That kind of people, that kind of mindset, are these people online that get upset about fans beginning excited about new talent. Instead of telling, Hey, you don't know that person. Name one Julia match. Instead of doing that nonsense, how about you say, hey, hey guys, those of you, those, those of you who are excited about Julia, here's a match you go watch. Here's some highlights. Th th this is what she's about. Here's, um, um, here's her style. You know, she works stiff. She, she's a very stiff worker, okay? She likes to slap people in the face. She likes to headbutt people. She likes to headbutt people. Tell them about her talents instead of being a gatekeeper. I kid you not. Some of these comments on Twitter are cringe. For example, so first of all, this is the, this is her at standard liver, um, here on the big screen that showed her, she was very, it was very wholesome. Her reaction. She did not know she was going to get shown. She was taken aback by the reaction. A lot of people knew who she was. They clapped for her. It was a nice moment. Good for her. She's going to come to NXT. She's going to kill it. I'm very excited to see what she does. Okay. But check out some of this reaction from these people. Look at this nonsense. Julia is going to the Fed, was there in plain sight. Roshi, being the one to feed the Fed talent, is the nasty part. First of all, 
this, these talent are free agents, okay? Julia is a free agent. Utami, who also left stardom when her contract ended, is a free agent. They are free to sign to whoever they want to sign. How is that nasty to tell a talent who is out of contract, hey, guess what? WWE might be something for you. You know, there might be an option for you. Check it out. Why don't you check it out? What's upset about it? What's wrong with that? Why would you be upset about that? Why is that a problem? You know, it's just stupid takes from these people. Like, I don't understand the process, the thought process. Do you want these people to be successful or not? Do you want Julia to be popular? Do you want the best for her or not? I'm confused by this line of thinking. Truly. I don't get it. I'm trying to understand. Um, probably going to do the same thing with the ones leaving stardom, joining the new promotion. What's wrong with that? They're free agents. So what if he says, hey, by the way, um, Utami or uh, Julia, um, WWE could be an option for you. What's wrong with that? Why is that a problem? Why are you upset by that? It's stupid. Like, they're so competitive. It's like, I don't understand it. I don't know. Maybe Tony Khan shouldn't have been sh shitting on Roshi. Roshi got let go or they had, he got re relieved of his duties because he was trying to recruit the women who were going to be out of contract to his new promotion. So, did, so, um, so Bruce, I think Bruce, Bruce road, that's the name of the parent company. Let me make sure I wrote it out. Make sure I'm not crazy. Yeah. Um, Bruce road, they wanted him to go away. So he went away and then Tony Khan shitted on him. Well, if you do that, a lot of these women um, are fans of, are not fans. A lot of these women see him as a father figure. So of course they're not going to love that. He said that. So they don't want to, they don't want anything to do with AEW. That's his problem. Tony Khan should have shut his mouth. Okay. I just don't understand this line of thinking. Look at it. Look at another one. Look at this one. I low key wish Josh, uh, Joshi. I low key wish Julia wasn't going to the WWE simply because Fed shields are going to pretend to know who she is or what she, or what she does. They're going to pretend to know who cares if they pretend to know who cares. Why does that bother you? Why does it matter? This is so stupid. Like who cares? Why does it bother you? If someone is excited or pretend to know who she is, why does that bother you? Why? I don't understand. Like who cares? First of all, if you use the word fed in your responses, you're a loser. Okay. You're a loser fed. It's so lame. Like who cares if they pretend to know who cares if they get excited? How about tell them who she is, show them some highlights. Like, I don't understand the thought process. Like it's on and on people complaining and bitching about the re response. Here's another one. I really hope Sean Ross Hap is wrong about Roshi because if he's right, then it's a nasty move for pro wrestling history. How that nasty? He left the company. He's no longer working for stardom. He wants to start. He wants to start his own promotion. So how is it bad if he's potentially working with the WWE? He needs to help. He may need help starting up the company. Maybe they're going to share some talent. Maybe some NXT women will head to Japan to be in matches in his promotion. Maybe some some maybe some people in his promotion will come over to the NXT and have some matches. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that synergy? What's wrong with that? I don't, I'm confused. It's just stupid behavior. And I'm seeing all this online. You said you weren't aware of Julia until last month. And that's fine. I've been aware, of, I've been aware of her for like what the last six months, whenever the story came up, I did my research. I looked up her career. I found out she was the world of stardom champion. I found out all the success she had her, her click her group was, was Tekla and Maya was in the group she was in all that stuff. I did some research on her, Micah, who's currently the, the, um, world of stardom champion. She was in her, um, stable as well, or faction as well. That's fine. You didn't, you didn't know that you can learn that you can become a fan. You can, you can, you can become, you can become a fan of stardom. What's wrong with not knowing something and then learning about something and then becoming a fan later. What's wrong with it? I do not understand this line of thinking and Someone has to call out the nonsense. All right. Someone has to do it. Here's another one. This place is going to be on fire. If Roshi rumor ends up being true. This is not really that. This is, this is not really nothing. This isn't anything. I'll skip this one. But here about this one. 
Oh yeah, this is kind of annoying as well. They're really letting Julia keep all her strikes in NXT. She's going to give a freshman out of college, a freshman volleyball player, the biggest concussion ever. So Julia is stiff. She works stiff for sure. She does. This, this, is, a, this is obvious. She, do, she really does. I'm not going to front and say she doesn't. She works stiff. She slaps really hard. She punches really hard. She strikes very hard. She headbutts her opponents. She can adjust like this thought, this whole thought process that, oh, she's going to be beating up all the women in NXT. She's going to NXT to adjust her game a bit. Okay. You can work stiff or, or make it look real all day long. You don't have to give people concussion. You don't have to give people black eyes and give people um, knots on their head. Okay. She'll be fine. I'm not worried about Julia in NXT. I'm not worried about her. She'll be fine. She'll be perfectly fine adjusting to the WWE style. All right. But that's all I see. Or oh, she's gonna beat up the the NIL kids. She's gonna beat up all the talent. Calm down. It's not that serious, okay? It's not that she's, she'll be fine. Is if the Stardom girls can take a beating, the NXT girls can take the beating. It's not that serious. It's not that big a deal. Chill a little bit, all right? Jeez. Move on. Let's explode some more people. The most annoying drones you will make will. Wait, 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 let me say that again. The most annoying drones you know will make their entire layout and and online identity being a Julia stand for the next few months. So if they become a Julia stand, why do you care? Like, this is so stupid. Like who cares if they become stand fans of the woman? You should be happy that she's getting more fans. It's just stupid comments like this, stupid tweets like this. It just it doesn't make any sense. Here's another one. Excited to hear people who shit on the concept of forbidden door and the general idea of wrestling outside of the, this country being getting excited for Julia in NXT. What kind of dumb, this is stupid. How is the forbidden door the same as a free agent signing with the company? If Julia comes to the WWE, she will sign a contract and become a, an exclusive talent. How is that, how is that the same of, as um, a, forbi a forbidden door um, um, show where you have someone from one sh promotion taking on someone from another promotion? It's completely different. So I'm confused by this. What? These are the dumbass tweets you get online. This makes no sense. Julia will be exclusive to WWE, not a forbidden door situation. She will be an exclusive WWE talent if she signs. She's a free agent. She's a free agent. That's not the same as someone from stardom who signed facing someone from WWE who signed, right? It's completely different. Yes, forbidden door, in my opinion, it's hard to get invested because there's no storylines. There's no stories. It's random women and men from different promotions coming in to have these dream matches, but there's no storyline. So of course I'm not invested. When Julia comes to NXT, there'll be stories for her. There'll be storytelling. It's completely different. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's just so, so annoying, man. It, it really is like just weird gatekeeping all around It's weird, weird gatekeeping. And like it's, it's unbecoming. It's a shame. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it whatsoever. Some Joshi stands are low key closet racists who don't want foreigners in Japanese wrestling. That or they're just like really like they like being in a little bubble. Oh, we're cool. We know what's going on in the Joshi world, you know. We know what's going on. We don't want these outsiders in there. It's just a weird, a weird mindset. This is weird. They need to stop that. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever that they do this. I only started watching wrestling after my hiatus since Royal Rumble. Can someone tell me what IWC stands for? Internet, internet wrestling community. That's what it stands for. The internet wrestling community. So anybody who's online, anyone who's on Twitter or Reddit or on YouTube talking about this, they are part of the IWC. Anybody who talks about wrestling content in any form or fashion is considered IWC. So that's what IWC means. Internet wrestling community. What else here? She was, yeah, she was shocked. She definitely did not know. She definitely did not know she was going to be on screen. 
You definitely did not know. You can see it from the, from the very beginning. Oh, she's sitting there next to William Regal, and so is Rosie. Rosie is, is the one standing next to, um, sitting next to Regal, that's Rosie, the stardom founder who left stardom. And that's William Regal, of course. And then here's Julia. And she did not know what, she had no idea. <laughs> She had no idea they're going to show her. This is a genuine reaction, which is cool. She's taken aback by how many people are there and people responding to her because she looks up at the at the at the at the, at the screen. She sees her name. She sees her face. She's like, oh yeah, it's, it's for me. She was taken aback. Very nice, wholesome moment. All right, but these people are. Do you? I I feel like WWE wants to do big pillies in Japan next year. They are definitely trying to grow their brand over there. Clearly, they are trying hard to grow to grow in the Asian market. They had an um a tryout recently. I think it was last year or early this year. It was all Asian talent, all Asian talent. So they're trying to to break into the Asian market more and get more Asian faces on the on the TV. They want more representation in the Asian community. So you'll be seeing that coming very quickly because they're, they're definitely, a, it's definitely a focus for sure. So I can definitely see them doing something in Japan eventually. But yeah, here's Julia, talented, very talented um, wrestler, star power. It looks, it looks like a million bucks. That's why they want her, big time star. And people are freaking out whenever WWE fans are excited about something. It's crazy. Make it make sense. I can't make it make sense. But uh, they have to deal with it because Triple H is going to keep going after the Josies. You're going to keep working with these women. He's going to keep recruiting them. And it's something he's going to have to deal with. Folks just have to deal with it. I'm sorry. Like, I don't, I don't, know, what the, I don't know what else to say. But people like Julia, more of them are going to come over to WWE. I think Julia will probably, she'll probably go after the, um, North American title. They, they recently created a North, a North American title. I believe they created it potentially for Julia. So I, I think she'll go into the North American women's title race when she gets to the WWE. Then she'll have a run, maybe a year. And then she'll be in the main roster for sure. She's good. She just needs to learn the WWE way. Once she learns the WWE way, she'll be fine. Not worried about her whatsoever. By the way, now we're on the topic of Stand and Deliver. Um, Stand and Deliver overall was a good show for the most part. Good matches. I thought that triple threat match between um, Obafemi, um, uh, Dijak, and Josh Briggs, I think the other guy's name. Great. One of the best, one of the best triple threat matches I've seen in a minute. Just as good as the Gunther, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre triple threat. I thought fantastic triple threat. One of the best triple threats I've seen in a minute. Very, very good. Go back. If you haven't watched Stand and Deliver, go out of your way to watch that match. Sorry if you come as a, come off as a Joshi hater. No, it's, it's fine. Like, you just, they're annoying. They're annoying. For sure, they're annoying. Like, I know a little bit about the, I've been doing research over the last six months, so I know a little bit about a lot of these talents. And um, it's just like, it's just annoying, like dealing with these people. Like, so I can't imagine somebody knowing nothing. Like I know like some of it now because I've done the research. I can't imagine knowing nothing and try to talk to these people. If they talk down to you, they talk down to you, they, they talk like, like you're not welcomed in the community. It's just weird. Like, you should be happy that people are wanting to know about these women and discovering these talented women that are wrestling over there. I won't be surprised if I won't be surprised if Azumi or AZM as Sasha Banks calls her. I wouldn't be surprised if she makes her way to the USA by way of um, the WWE eventually, you know, because she looks up to a lot of these women look up to EO. They look up to Kyrie and a lot of them look up to, to Julia as well. A lot of them, a lot of them look up to Julia. I would not be surprised one bit. If eventually um, Azumi uh, Mayu, Mayu is loyal. She's like the ace of stardom. 
my big time talent inside of Mayu, she is loyal to Roshi. The only reason why people, people believe the only reason why she's not going to Roshi's promotion that they starting up is because she's already under contract. She, and she extended her deal before all this broke down. If not for that, she would also be going to WWE too. So I think, well, not to WWE. Let me rephrase that. She'll be joining Roshi in his promotion. So I believe when her contract's up, she's leaving stardom as well. Potentially she's going to Roshi and then Roshi could funnel her to WWE. Eventually that's all fine and good. There's no problem with that. Triple H is taking care of these women. The, the Vince McMahon era is over. So I don't know what the issue is with Joshi's being in the WWE. What's the fear factor in there? I don't know. Okay. But it's annoying for sure. It is definitely annoying online when discussing Julia or anyone in the Joshi world for that matter. It's annoying. Oh boy. All right. That's all I have. If anyone has any questions, first of all, first of all, hit the like button for me, hit the like button. And if anyone has any questions, let me know before I head on out of here and get ready for night two of mania. My first bad experience with the, that fan base was when I was hating on Bianca, when they were hating on Bianca for beating EO at backlash. Yep. I know what you're talking about and saying she carried the match and well, yeah, they were very annoying. They're very annoying. That fan base is toxic for sure. Um, yeah, it's bad. They're so bad. Oscar fans who are also toxic themselves. Don't sit, don't, don't tell, don't tell anyone I said that. But Oscar fans, they could be, they could be kind of toxic themselves. Oscar fans were upset with EO, EO Sky fans in that world of fandom. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. It's weird for sure. Like, what match do I think will be the best match tonight? Probably the main event. Probably the main event. I think they're going to go out of the way to make that main event special. I believe they think they did the best thing ever. I believe they think this will be the best moment in WrestleMania history. So because of that, I think they're going to go over and beyond to make the main event special. So I think that'll be the big takeaway because we're going to have a lot of surprises, a lot of surprises in the main event tonight. If not that, if not that, probably, I think Logan Paul, um, Randy Orton and KO will be a sleeper. I think they're all talented. They're all good in the ring. I think that could be, a, I think that could be a, a sleeper. EO versus Bailey. I'm not sure. I think that'll bring the emotion. But that's the thing. Like, I think the, I think the Cody match will also bring a lot of emotion. Bailey EO is in a bad spot. Is in a bad spot. I would not be surprised if they hold off and had EO retain. I would not be surprised. It's in a really bad spot because they're going to have a lot of emotion because the, 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 the relationship between EO and Bailey, and then you're going to have a title change. And then when that's in, when that's over, you gonna have another match later following very, the next match will be also a very emotional title change that like Bailey and EO is in a tough spot, but we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see. But it's in a really tough spot. Hopefully they're ready. It's gonna be tough. If Karrion Cross stinks up the joint on Mania, I surely think Triple H needs to give up on him. Probably. You're probably right about that. If he stinks it up for sure, they should probably give up. Or not give up, but just like stop pushing him so hard in your face, you know? Who knows? Maybe Triple H wants to bring in a new era with three... Possible. I can see him doing that. Right now, I'm still saying Bailey wins. I'm just saying it's in a bad spot. That's all. But I think she still wins for sure. For now, I would not be surprised if something else happened though. That is for sure. I would not be surprised.
yeah, man, it's going to be a good night, I think, overall. I'm hoping Montez and Angelo Dawkins and Bobby put on a good show for the fans. That street fight. Hoping it could be a clusterfuck. It could be. I'm glad you brought it up, Pedro. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Bianca saves Bailey. Um, you have to believe Damage Control is going to get involved. You have to believe they're going to get involved somehow. So if they do get involved, do I want to see Bianca Belair run down there to save Bailey? No, I do not. Bianca hasn't forgiven Bailey. Yeah, so I doubt she helps. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Will she help Naomi? If Naomi goes down there, let's say Naomi runs down there and she gets jumped, then I can see that. But I don't like it. I don't like it. I'll be curious to see what they do. Is it possible that Bianca could make her face, show her face in the main event in that match? I think it's possible. Do I want it to happen? Probably not, because I don't like that for Bianca's character. Because Bailey never apologized, so I don't like it. Right. You think the Bailey and EO match will be, will, could be handcuffed? That's potentially the case. Because you have a title change, and you have another title change, and you're going to have a lot of um, over, overbooking in the main event. And do you have um, a lot of overbooking in the Bailey match too? You're going to have a title change with both with a lot of overbooked stuff happening? I don't know about that one. That might be rough for Bailey and for Bailey fans. I don't want to see because Bailey fans are very passionate online. The Bailey fans, the sheep, as she calls them, the sheep are very, very passionate. I don't want a situation where the fans are complaining online because they can be kind of annoying themselves. Bailey fans can be, you know. You're not sure Drew beat Seth? Oh, I'm sure. Let me put it to you this way. If Drew doesn't beat Seth, he said himself he's going to retire if he loses. He's going to retire. That's what he said. So I sincerely hope they know what they're doing with that. And he gets his moment. Because I want Drew to have his moment, you know? Enough's enough. I hear you. I hear you, Pedro. I hear you. Yeah, enough's enough. Let him have that win. We don't need um, another loss for... My man Drew, you know? We don't need it. I want to see him get that win and hopefully move on to Clash of the Castle and being champion. That'd be, that'd be awesome for him. So I think Priest can... Yes, I do. I do think Priest can cash in tonight. Um, and win it, he could. They can, always have, they can always have Drew win it back at Clash of the Castle. But I do think it's very possible that he tries, at least. What better time than Romania? What better time than Romania to have, it, to have him try, you know? Bailey and Drew both, both deserve it. I agree, they do both deserve it. They do. Drew put in a lot of, his best work, his best work of his, of his entire career has been recently, you know? So Drew deserves it, and I think Bailey has done enough. She put she put over enough people. She put over Damage Control. She put over EO. She put over Dakota. Now it's time for her to get her belt in her moment. I say. So I would go with Bailey for sure. But we'll see what happens. All right, folks, we're going for an hour and a half. Thank you guys for joining me. Hit the like button um, before you leave. Make sure to enjoy money. I say money in the bank. Wow. Make sure to enjoy uh, WrestleMania. Seth is going to be gassed. I agree. Seth is going to be selling that knee injury. So if Drew loses this match, then Drew is going to look like kind of a loser. Can't have some Seth selling his knee injury than having Drew lose again. That looks bad. All right. So Drew, let him win. Okay, let him win. All right, but that's it for, for now, folks. I'll probably stream again tomorrow after night two. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. 
no make sure you to um enjoy the night no matter what happens hopefully it's the best night of the like best night of your life in terms of wrestling because it's supposed to be the biggest main event ever the biggest mania ever so i'm hoping they deliver and it's a good match but we'll see um it could be a, it could be a disaster but i'm hoping for the best I'm hoping for the best all right folks see you later talk to you later peace